The truth of the matter, it's their way of cheaply weeding out idiots. That's basically it. What's up guys? So I have an interesting topic today I wanted to bring up from all of my experience with Genius Garage and all the students. Of course, with them being in engineering, design, and looking for the future, getting that job, landing that career, and starting it. How do you do it? The big topic of conversation, co-ops. Mandatory co-ops, full-time co-ops, part-time, internships, etc. What are they? How do they matter? How do you strategize that? How important are they? And where do you go? So first of all, Genius Garage itself is a dream shot, hands-on engineering and design internship. It is an educational internship. It's an opportunity to grow, go as far as you can in a real world environment where it's mattered. So race cars, building airplanes, doing design, prototype cars, you name it. Really great hands-on real world experience. That's an important part, but there's only one Genius Garage right now. So what are you gonna do out there in the real world? Well, first of all, if you're going out there for an engineering co-op, you need to know what that is. And I don't mean from how school looks at it or a university tells you it is. But let's look at what an engineering co-op is at the bottom line for industry or for the business. The truth of the matter, it's their way of cheaply weeding out idiots. That's basically it. I'm not even kidding. Because here's the thing, if industry just hired students out of engineering based upon what's on paper and their resume and how they interview, that's not everything. That's not really a trial run. That's not really testing them out. And the problem is that that company goes out and hires all these people and like a big portion of them just stink and just are no good to work with. They don't work with people. They, they have no practical skills. They're just, they're just not good in the workplace then that costs the company more to have to either train that person or to eventually fire them or get rid of them. It's more expensive. Then if they do co-ops over a summer, they can figure out who's good to work with or not. That's why in co-ops, the superiors are paying attention to them and grading them and reading them. It's an interview process effectively. Now, I bring that up so you realize it. Industry doesn't have time to give you school and train you. They're not doing it to be nice. They're doing it because they want to weed out the people who stink and try to find the better employees because it'll help their bottom line. But what you need to know is how to pick a good one, okay? First of all, it, it really pays you to network. Network with um, you know, upperclassmen, people a little bit older than you, and see where they've gone. What co-ops have they had? How was it? You know, there could be two different people at the same co-op who have two different experiences because maybe they worked with different superiors. It's not always gonna be the same, but you're gonna hear good things and bad things. Some co-ops, you might get stuck behind a desk doing nothing, just fiddly little things because it's basically their trial way to know if you suck or not. But you might go to another where there's some cool people there that actually wanna mentor you in business and life and engineering. So really look into that. That's important to know where you're gonna get good experiences or not. But first and foremost, when you're going after a paid co-op or internship, it is there so the company can weed you out if you stink or are better. So first and foremost, try to get an internship at the company you actually think you wanna work at. Plain and simple. And if you can't do that, get an internship at a similar one or a competitor or maybe one that's more glamorous or more difficult to get in. Because then when you go to get a job, they're going to look at your co-ops and go, wow, they really run people ragged and have to do some serious engineering at that one. You're probably pretty good, right? So that's my biggest topic. Try to get an internship at a company or kind of company you actually want to work at. If you want to work in like aerospace engineering or, you know, like if it's like Boeing or McDonnell Douglas or something like that, then go try to get one for one of those types of companies. But it's much harder if you're going to go to a company that makes like windows or insulation and then you want to transfer to something else. Or if you want to be in the automotive industry for a manufacturer, if you can get a co-op at Tesla or if you can get a co-op of GM, that's going to be more helpful to go one way or the other. So be thinking of those kinds of things. Now the other aspect that I really want to bring up beyond just what a co-op really is and you need to understand that because it'll help you out, is this real world experience. The company doesn't care if you have 15 years of SOLIDWORKS experience or something like that, okay? You just need to be able to use it. But if you've never done anything with your hands, if you don't work with other people, if you don't have to think critically and problem solve in the real world and think of logistics of like tools, can we do this, what are our resources, 
then you're just an academic yachts to them. Because it's business out there in the real world, and they want you to be somebody who can work with the team, get hands-on, make something happen, solve problems to help the bottom of the line of the company so they can be profitable and have a reason to pay you to be there. Does that make sense? So hands-on things. That could literally be working on your car, working on construction equipment, working on radio control cars, radio control airplanes, slot cars, building an airplane. Whatever it is, you need to go out there, whether it's in high school or younger or after in college and get hands-on in building if you want to be an engineer or designer, etc. Because they take that seriously. And I've said in many videos, if you're doing something, let's say it's radio control cars, make a portfolio. What did you design? What did you create? What did you fix? How did you test it when you go racing? What did you see and problem solve? And, and how did you gather information to test it, tune it, make it faster, and go race? What were your resources? If you can put all that together in a presentation or in a way for them to explain, maybe that alone won't get you the job, but it's sure going to make them pay attention to you and give them a lot better comfort level that you are actually somebody that can get it done. And here at Genius Garage, I've actually accepted students who have done things like that. Had a young man that you know, he lives in a part of the country where there's no aerospace engineering going on. Actually, he's over in the other ear room right now working on a BD-5. But he worked on construction equipment, changing head gaskets in a diesel uh, truck. Uh, and just when I spoke with him about how he did that, how he knew something was wrong, you know, he used a forklift because they didn't have an engine crane, just all these things. It's real world problem solving. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty and he knew how to get a job done given a particular resources. And based on his interest, in aerospace engineering as well as some of the models that he's created and how he's gone about it myself as somebody that's looking at him for talent to choose it like any recruiter recruiter interviewer talent or business leader would do I, I saw that glimmer and i wasn't wrong when i found it so what i'm saying to you guys is this when you're in engineering school at a university or you know design thinking about that going for your career you can't just sit around and go to school if all you do is go to school and graduate with 4.0, that's not enough. You have got to do real world things, real world projects. And remember, those co-ops and those paid internships out there really just come down to the cheaper way for those companies to weed people out and find talent because they need to test you guys out. So when you're doing that, go for the ones at the companies and types of companies you want to work for. And you can do a couple different ones, but go for it. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to find out how it's going to be at that company, try to make friends with upperclassmen, maybe that they've already been there. And the other thing is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to shoot for something big. But at the same time, too, you got to know yourself. If you're like a, if you got like a 2.0 or 2.5 grade point average and you don't have much experience, it's going to be hard to getting in something really, really interesting or really good. So you've got to do things on your resume for experience, whether you make money at it or not, even if it's just helping out friends, building something, building radio control airplanes, being part of clubs, all that. These companies want to see that you can be hands-on, you can solve problems, you can work with other individuals well, solve your differences with them, work within given resources and time frames to finish problems and make it through. And if you get those co-ops, you got to keep trying. It takes a lot of effort to do it. You got to go for it and don't be afraid to move somewhere else for it. You got to go for it. This is your time in life to make that happen and to succeed. And if you get it and you're a pretty cool person at that co-op, they very well likely may be offering you a job. I've seen that happen at Genius Garage many times for the students that also have that great world, real world experience. So that was my advice today for you young engineers and whatnot, get out there, find the right co-ops, co -ops, know what they really are for industry, and make sure you're always looking to grow as an individual. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Comment and subscribe. See you next time. <laughs>